afternoon everybody thank you so much for tuning in this is your girl raw silk and you are watching a special edition of the sister to sister can we talk show brought to you by the crossley coleman group and alive in global media i made sure to get that global in there because he's really touchy about that but today i am sitting down with a dynamic queen i am humbled and honored that she answered the call i am sitting here with richmond sheriff candidate Carol Adams. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Look, I feel like I am like sitting like with some celebrity status. Um, I, listen, we're going to talk to her. We're going to talk to her about her run for sheriff. We're going to talk about the Carol Adams Foundation and what she's um, got going on and what she um, perceives going on in her near future. We're also going to hear about this community service award that she um, just received from Richmond City Council. So, Carol, how are you this afternoon? I'm fine. And you? She's like, how she know all oh, of that? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Carol, before we jump into the, the meat of our interview, Tell us, I mean, I don't think, like I said off camera, anyone in Richmond doesn't know who Carol Adams is, but who is Carol Adams? Oh, wow. Well, I'm, a, I'm really a shy and introverted person, um, but I love people, you know, and God made me be this, this person that I have to speak to everybody. I have to get to know you one-on-one, -on -one, and that's always been a part of my life from a little girl. My grandmother told me that you speak to everybody, mm -hmm. no matter what they look like, no matter what condition they're in you. That's just about being a human being. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've lived my life. And everybody knows my story that I lost my mom at a really, really young age. And um, so I've been trusting the Lord and God has been showing me and directing me, you know, where to go, what to do, when to move, when not to move. And um, I'm a loving mother and being grandmother, Granny Carol. I is love Granny that Carol grandmother is the most important role that I play right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Taking time to be with my grandbabies and to just love upon them and to, you know, to help them navigate through life and help them explore life and, and 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 the number one priority for me is to teach people to dream and to teach my babies to dream is that you know you i've never lived my life with somebody putting me in a box mm -hmm. and it's it's really really important that you get to be you and mm -hmm. we so often suppress our suppress our feelings and going forward because we're afraid of what other people think mm -hmm. and um you know and god showed me that in december 80 december the 30th 1980 that you know, he has control because my plans to leave home, to join the military, to become an airplane pilot, Air Force pilot, you know, that was out the window because those was my plans. Mm -hmm. His plans, he turned totally it all different. upside down. And his plan for me was not to wear a blue uniform for the Air Force, but to wear a blue uniform with the Richmond Police Department. And at that time, I didn't like the police, you know, because of what happened to my mom. Right. I was totally, strictly against being the police, and he made me become the police. It's funny how you say that because I, too, find myself in circumstances and situations dealing with things mm -hmm. that I didn't think. So I say, okay, that was God's plan, okay? Mm -hmm. So even in the test, there's a testimony that comes out of that. Mm -hmm. So education, I know that you've been a long-term police vet, 20-something um, years yes. that you've been with the Richmond Police Force. Um education where did you go to school at okay, well, I've, I've worked seven years with the sheriff's department okay and then i've worked 20 years with the richmond Police okay department, okay and i'm a graduate of richmond public schools okay and a graduate of the university of richmond school of continuing studies okay mm -hmm. okay and so did you you grew up in the city yes i've been i moved here when i was five years old i've lived here all my life except for about 10 years when my children were younger mm -hmm. i lived in chesterfield mm -hmm. and um, once they got in high school we moved back to the city and my kids graduated from richmond Okay. and I've been here ever since. Okay. So Richmond is definitely in, in your blood. Oh, Richmond, definitely Richmond in your blood. My, it's my home. And, okay. and I tell people um, that, you know, this is my city and these are my people. I took an oath to protect the citizens of Richmond and to be um, kind, pat, compassionate, and nurturing to them because everybody needs, you know, needs somebody to be there for them. And, you know, we all know that family sometimes isn't there. And God showed me that you know, he sent people in my life to help me and to bring me along. And without them, I wouldn't be where I am. Okay. So when you were with the sheriff department, did you, you worked under Sheriff Woody? I worked, no, I worked under Sheriff Winston. Winston, okay. And I worked under um, Sheriff Michelle Mitchell. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, because I'm new to, I'm yes. fairly new. Yes. So I'm, Sheriff Woody is like the only no, sheriff no. that I ever know. No. Okay, Andy so Winston there was. a long-standing sheriff. Okay. Um, in the city. and. I worked for him and he was awesome. I okay. admired him. 
I worked um, in the various positions in the jail and I worked in his record room, so I computed okay. time. Okay. And so I had a, a close relationship with him and one of my great friends, um, Bill Bolden, who died. Um, but and then I worked for Michelle, and of mm -hmm. course Michelle worked there for Sheriff Winston while I was there. So we had a great working relationship. Okay, so. okay. One of the questions that I um, asked um, Antoinette Irvin when I interviewed her is, how difficult did you find it being in law enforcement as a woman, and it's particularly a woman of color? Well, law, law enforcement is is a wonderful job and a wonderful opportunity and we know there's predominantly male and so progression is always the a priority um, but it doesn't matter when you're wearing that uniform whether you're male or female is that you do your job mm -hmm. and you be there for the next officer and you have the mindset that you're there as a officer not a male or a female and so as long as you work hard with good great work ethics that's the number one priority and and there's no male, male um, um, officer in my in my department that wouldn't take me on as their partner and say, hey, I want Carol. If it's 10 men standing there, they can say, I want Carol. You know, my, my size, my color, my height, my weight, none of that takes precedent as to my work ethic. And that's the number one priority. But progression is always the key when we talk about women in certain fields where it's um, dominated by males. Okay, let's okay. We talked about this off camera. Okay. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is like 26 days now, 25 days before the election. Yes. And Carol Adams wakes up and says, I'm going to run for sheriff. How did we get there? Okay. So, no, I didn't wake up and say, I'm going to run for sheriff. Okay. Uh, I, like I told you, I admired Sheriff Winston when he was there. He was a really kind and caring man. Um, and he made the job for all of us, really, really wonderful. So it's great when you have a leader that leads by example. Mm -hmm. And then also I work for Michelle, but I tell you, um, so deep down inside, I always had a dream to be, to do the job, to be the sheriff, okay. because I work with the sheriff. And um, so eight years ago, when Woody was running for his second term, because he did three terms, yes. and I was driving into work, and on his sign, I'm looking at the sign, and all I could see was me. You know, and I told my family and told and all of my family and friends, none of them are shocked. You know, people that don't know me no, are shocked. Right. Um, because, you know, every time election time came, they said, like, well, you're going to do it this time? You're going to do it this time? And I'm like, no, no, because I have a wonderful place at the police department. I love my city. The community loves me. My family loves me. And I'm happy, really, really happy. So, you know, the primary came, so I'm still letting things go, and I've tried to support both, camp both female mm -hmm, candidates because mm -hmm. I know them. And you know, last Saturday night, um, something just got into me, into my spirit, and it was like, okay. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So a friend of mine, he um, texted me about, he was talking about, I had a question about retirement, and nothing about the sheriff's mm -hmm. office, because he had no idea what his conversation did to did me. To you. Right, and it's about retiring. If you, um, like with the police department, we've worked 25 years and you retire instead of 30 years which okay. would be a civilian. Okay. So if you if you, you could opt for 20 years or 25 years. And so he said, well, if you do, if you opted for 20 and you decided to go at 25 and you opted, decided to go at 20, what would happen? And I said, well, probably was you would get reduced benefits. And so then he sent me the, um, he said, okay. I said, but if you find out for sure, let me know because I like to be true with what, form, I, what, right. I, what I'm saying. And so he sent me the, um, the, the, um, the city um, document that says at age, with five years of service and age 50, you can retire at any time with reduced benefits. So I'm 54. Okay. I just completed my 20 years in May. She is no way 54. Yes, we'll I talk am. About I'm 54 <laughs> and I just completed my 20 years in May. And if I work another four and a half years, because it's, it's, I've been there 20 years and six months, and if I work another four years, that would only add like 50, 60 bucks to bucks my retirement check. Wow. Right? You think about right, that? Right. And so now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm restless in my bed. And so my, but before that, another friend of mine, because Two Street was last week, he had to work yes. Two Street. So he used the works at a church. So he said, well, hey, can you work my job at the church for me because I got to work Two Street? And so I'm like, yeah, because we worked the church together. And so at the church, and when I'm there, I stand in this room 
because I'm waiting for them to bring the offering through, right? And so in this room, they have literature about everything, right? Breast cancer awareness, all of this. And for 12 months, I've been in this room, and I've read everything in there because I love to read. And I'm going to show you. On this Sunday, I'm not supposed to be there, first of all, okay. right? And so here I am standing there, and this is what's just there. The table is cleaner than it's ever been before, and this document is, is, is there, is, is there. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Not just wow. the top. Not just the top, but look at that. Look at that. That's crazy. That, that's God. That's a revelation. Um, that, that's, okay, okay. That's, that's, you know, and I'm like, what? You know, and I'm standing here. And you myself. like say no. Yeah, yeah, looking, yeah, at yeah, it we're again. looking at it. And so I had to bring it with me. And I'm going to share those with you <laughs> so you can see. <laughs> That is actually a coloring book with a female sheriff, African American, African American female sheriff on the cover, uh -huh. and that says your it. friend, the sheriff. And for anybody who knows Carol Adams, she is always referred to as your friend, <laughs> Carol Adams. So that, yeah, okay. In, in, in the community with the kids, right? You know, and and so I I, I I called this friend of mine. I said, hey, look, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. So, you know, go and I say, look. This thing, you know, I've been suppressing it, suppressing it, and suppressing it because, you know, I'm going to do my 25 years and the, and the foundation is going great. I'm getting ready to open up a resource center with the foundation. So everything is wonderful. So, you know, I'm smooth sailing. I don't need this chaos, right? <laughs> I don't need this. But so it's like, go for it. We got your back. We're going to support you. So Monday morning, I get to work. You know, I call my boss because I got to call my boss because, you know, I love him to death. Right, I'm going to be there to support him. And, um, and that's why I've been hanging in there. And so I tell him, listen, somebody got to do. Okay, okay. I got to do. And um, and I said, and so this is what I'm going to do. I said, I know people are going to think I'm crazy. But growing up and throughout my life, I've never cared what people thought because I'm not living for, for people. I'm living and walking by the grace of God. And he's the only person that I need to be accountable for. I don't know what the outcome's going to be. No people to say, and it doesn't really matter. Because I know this is his plan for me. It may not be the sheriff, but it might have been just to push me out of the Frenchman Police Department to run the Carol Adams Foundation 24-7. But I know one thing for sure is that whatever it is, I'm going to do my best and continue to support the people of Richmond and to do what I do. And it doesn't matter what role I do it in. And so I asked him, I said, I can only do it with your support. And he says, do what you got to do, Carol. I'll support you. And at that point in time, I thought that um, the, the code says that you can take leave and, and, and participate, participate in activities okay. like this, but, because, and which you can, but if, I, if you, if, because it's in the city of Richmond, I had to retire. So okay. then when they asked me the question, it's like, okay, are you going to, yes, I am, because I know this is not about me. This is clearly not about me. This is about God, because all the times that, you know, in, in eight years ago, I had a strategist working telling me what I need to do to win the election, to, I need to raise money, you know, and I said, I don't want to raise money for an election. If I raise money, I'm going to raise money to help the citizens and to help the people. So I don't want to raise, up, raise, raise that kind of money to pour into a campaign. Mm -hmm. Even though I know I need money and I need supporters, but, and really, I don't. I need God, and I got God. I got him in all my, all over me and all within me. And you know, since I said that too on Monday morning, I feel like, you know how we all dream about our night and shine, the armor coming to sweep us off our feet and to be mad and mm -hmm. I have that kind of joy in my heart. Okay. I have that kind of, and because I'm free, I've said it, I've done it, whatever the outcome is. And I was is, spoken out that's, into that's the it. That, universe and that's that, it. That's it. That is that's it. it. And I'm going through it and whatever the people decide, that it's the people's choice. And the only thing they know is that if they choose me, they have to write my name in. But that's some powerful faith. Yes. That is definitely some powerful faith. And I mean, we know that some successful things have happened when someone just speaks something out into the atmosphere mm -hmm. and let go and let God. That, 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 that's just let go and let God. So because of that and because of the, the timelessness of it, even for myself, what is your platform? What, 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 you, what is the foundation of Carol Adams, Sheriff Candidate? Well, first of all, I... Um, I, I would address the issues of the drugs getting into the jail and the loss of life getting into there. So that's something that, that must stop. So that's about the safety and security of the people that are inside. But I believe, um, I've been out in this field 
in my job doing outreach, community outreach in the communities. You know, we have a shooting, we're doing the outreach, and we're doing the outreach. But we're really not going down inside to do the outreach with the people who are committing these crimes. So we need to be working with them to see what's at their core. Because we want them to be different when they come out. But are we truly preparing them to be different? Have we gotten to the core as, you know, domestic violence, sex assault, trafficking, drug abuse, whatever has happened in that person's life to get them off kilter? We need to find that out while they're there. And we need to work avidly on that reentry piece from day one, not 30 days out and not 60 days out. The community and that family needs to be involved in that reentry plan because that reentry can only be successful if the person or the family is willing to accept the person back in. And then has this person stepped up to the plate and decided that they're going to be more responsible? And what does that look like? That needs to be the, the rigorous plan day in and day out. When you wake up in the morning, it should be just like us. What are we going to We got to go to work. If we're not working, we got to apply for a job. You know, we got to drop the kids off. We have to, inside has to be the reality of outside because when you're inside, you're separated and you're not accountable for anything. But when you have time, we have all of that time to bring in programs and partners to be able to make sure that we stop, we cut down on this recidivism. And we have to pour into people and, and let them know that God's light is in them, you know, and, and not just while they're there, but when they leave. And if we help them work on that plan and have a plan in place that can be executed and to have partners in place to help facilitate that once they step out of that, out of the doors. Um, and also about them being engaged in their family's life, not being separated while they're there. But what's going on? Read to them, you know, the liter you know, literacy programs, homework help. You know, if you're on the phone with your family, it should be what are your babies doing so that you can be definitely involved with that process mm -hmm. of, and the progress of your babies. So those kinds of things, you know, and enhance the morale, you know, in, in, in creating an atmosphere where the people enjoy coming to work and, and to create the process of um, elevation, you know, how do you get promoted, how do you go to the next step, and to create a fair process, not appointment, you know, not just by appointment, because when you work okay. for the chair, sheriff, the sheriff can say, okay, I want to promote you um, to captain, but then if you upset, if I if I upset you upset me, I can demote you, you know. Okay. So that all of those things play into morale. And so there are some great people that work there, and some of the people that are still there that work that I worked with before, you know. And I'm the exact same person. I love people, but I love progress too. And sometimes it takes outside of the box thinking to change things. And I think also that well, I know. The police and sheriff um, relationship has been a strain lately, and we should be working hand in hand. Right. Wherever you see the chief of police, you should see the sheriff, because we're working in for the same exact same reasons, mm -hmm. except for the police arrested and the bringing them to the, the end. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And so we should be in the community together, reassuring the community that we are a team and that we that public safety is our priority. priority and right. I should have partners with social services and all of the groups that are doing doing the work there to help make a person whole and to help create sustainability. That's the key, sustainability. Because when you leave jail, you're excited and you're happy. And if you go out, and so I, I give you a list of places to go. If you can't get a place to stay, if you can't get a job, think about it in 30 days. In your 30 days, it's make or break it. Breaking. And if you don't have, to, if, you, if you haven't attached yourself to something, it's like going fishing for 30 days and you hungry. And in 30 days, I done taught you, I done taught you how to fish. And every day you go out there and put your pole up and you haven't eaten in 30 days, what are you going to do? Go right you know, back go, to what yes. you know. Yes. Go back yes. to what you know. And that was one of the major things um, me and Mr. LP, we talked about on previous shows. I had this huge issue with restoration mm -hmm. of rights because in order to restore, you have to put back something whole. And you're right. A lot of people, more than half of the people leave jail feeling like they're whole and then they get back out into the world and they can't find anywhere to right. live, they can't find anybody to employ them, they can't normally go home to their families right. because of now they're wrecked, so they're not really, really restored and you're right, they digress right yeah. back into the behaviors that they know because mm -hmm. no one has the, the there's no room at the right. end and so no, to speak. And, and, right, and, and, and nobody's having faith enough right. to believe in them and to right. give them a chance and I tell you and, and if this does nothing else, it, it, is, it is a time for people to understand that God is still working 
and then you have to be still and you have to be obedient and right now i'm just being obedient and i'm doing what it is that i've been directed to do and the thing is is people need holistic it, we we have to do this holistically and we have to do it in teams there are no silos and that's why god is doing all of this havoc here in the city because he wants his people to unify to unify and to become together on one accord and that is not just by saying it but it's by, by doing action, action by doing it and the other thing is is that you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to get out there. And people, just like now, what in the world is she thinking about? Mm -hmm. I'm not living for them. I'm living for God. And he is my father, my creator. And he has, he has anointed my steps. And he knows my beginning and my end. He knows where I'm going, but I don't know where I'm going. But I'm not too afraid, afraid to, to, be to be obedient and to let people know that my light and my strength comes from him. And that's what this is all about. And, and there are so many people that are inside. They don't know that and don't understand that. And, you know, you may have come from a broken home. Hell, I came from a broken home. I didn't mean to curse, but I came from a broken home. And so look at, look at, look at my journey. It's no way that I'm supposed to be where I am, doing the things that I am. I'm supposed to be so broken that Thank I'm still you know, suffering. Still yes, suffering I did not have gave up and, and woe is me and woe is my sister. You know, and so, no. And God has blessed me. I've been to the White House speaking. I don't know, Ted, people ask me to do stuff. I'm like, why do you want me? You know, and, I, and they look at me like, why wouldn't we want you? But why do you want me? There's nothing special about me. Nothing special about me. I'm one of God's children, but there's, I'm no spe more special than you. So anything that can happen to me can happen to you. And that's a positive message, especially for young girls today. We talked off a, a camera about just pouring back into them mm -hmm. and encouraging them. So transition is tough. Let's, let's say it is now November 8th. Yes. And Carol Adams is now the new sheriff of the city of Richmond. And you have to go in and, you know, everybody's always, everybody's in a panic. People worry about their jobs. People worry about cuts. People worry about, let's talk about morale. How would you, how, how do you perceive coming in and building up morale that let's move forward, let's do, I mean, surely not everybody's going to make the cut. There's some people that, I mean, some dead weight, I understand that. Okay, and that's just the nature of any takeover, any job. You go in and you see a different vision. But how would you address morale? Well, first of all, I, 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 I can't go in and do anything but con conduct an assessment mm -hmm. because I have to see exactly what's going on mm -hmm. because I'm not in here, so I'm on the right. outside. So mm -hmm. I have to take my time to see what's what. I have to do my research because, you know, people are going to be running to tell you this and to, to, you know, there's always two sides to a coin. Mm -hmm. So then I have to do, do get reports ran. I have to see what who's my staff, how long they've been there, and I have to review everything, and, 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 and that's key. It's not to go in. I, I can't sit here and say, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I have to go in with the mindset that I have to get some understanding as to the operations of it. And then I have to, as time go, I have to make adjustments. I have to redirect some things. But I can only say what those, I can't say those th what those things are going to be until, until I get, get there. Inside, until I get there. It, right. But one short sure thing is to sure that I'm not going in and say that I got about 10 people that I'm bringing with me right off the bat so people's jobs are gone. That's not happening. If This is just me. And that's the other thing. People want to know, well, who's behind her? God's behind me. There's nobody. I don't have anybody that I promised a job. Anybody that's coming to do anything with me is just me and the Lord. And so, and that's what I want people to know. And so I have to get in there and I have to be patient and I have to be obedient and I have to have discernment as to the things. Now, number one, the safety and security of the facility. So I can say right away, creating a canine unit to have canines, dog, dr drug dogs outside because the drugs are coming from the outside, outside inside. inside. Right. And so right now, I know we use other departments, canine units. But to create a K-9 unit because that's going to create the safety and security of the facility. That's number one, okay? And so, but that would still take time because I would have to get some people trained, trained. and I would have to um, um, get some K-9. Mm -hmm. so, but that's a priority right there mm -hmm. because we're losing too many lives because drugs are getting inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's, and then even with that, I have to do an assessment to see about the funding, to see how much money I have and how and can I afford that. Right. And how can I redirect funds to be able to create create Absolutely. this. Absolutely. So that's so that's the priority first is to make a safe make the place safe mm -hmm. for everyone that's working.
working inside, and that's mm -hmm. visiting. So then that way we can shut down on drugs coming in. We're not depending on humans. We're depending on the canine mm -hmm. unit to be able to help. So, well, along Which with is what a, they're trained to do. Right, 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 right. right. Have you had any conversations with um, the current sheriff, Woody, that if you um, are elected sheriff, would he work with mm -hmm. you to transition, or you haven't got that far yet, or you just... Whatever you know, God tells I, you to do. I haven't gotten that far yet. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really, I, if anyone interested in helping me can call me because they know I'm a very, very approachable person. But I'm working with God. And so and he hasn't allowed. In, in this ninth hour, God has, has, has allowed people to attach themselves to who they want to be attached mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And so he sort of like made this way for me to be here. And people are looking like, whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people said, well, if I had known. I said, well, I didn't know, so you couldn't know, you know. So we are where we are, and we move, we are, and we can move mm -hmm, forward mm -hmm. this way. So sometimes God don't want you to prepare, or He wants to, He wants the picture to be blatant, so people can see that He's working here, that this, and that's what people need to know. So, but I'm willing if He reaches out to me and to ask, and and that is something that I can do, you know, is to work with Him and His staff if mm -hmm. He's if He's open to that. Yes. Are you concerned, um, one of the things that I asked um, Antoinette last night, are you concerned that because two of you are two phenomenal people that I have never met anyone that said anything negative about Carol Adams, okay? And I know that um, prior to you putting your hat in, everyone seemed to felt like Annette was one of the strongest candidates mm -hmm. um, to secure Cheryl. Are you concerned that now this might split the vote so people may not want to come out and vote because you're so well like she's so well like I don't want to make anyone you know upset or think that I'm not supporting them do you think do you is that a concern yeah, we all have we all have a responsibility and voting is a is something that we a right that we we fought to obtain and so the key is is for people to go to the polls and to vote for the person that they think will do the do the best job it doesn't matter how much you like or not like the other, but who do you think will do the best job? And that's basically it. I, I, I don't know anything negative about any of the candidates, and if I did, I wouldn't even attempt to say it. So right now, it is a fair and it's an equal race because none of us has held the position before. Mm -hmm. And so and people just go out and they do their duty and to make a decision as to who they choose. And, but you cannot not, because we have to look at the last election, the presidential yes, election, to about say that, that no, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to vote. It's a win-win situation. If they get hurt, that's great. If they get me, that's great. So that's where, that's where we, they, they have great options. The only thing with me is that my name's not on the ballot and they have to write it in. Right, and that's what I wanted to talk about um, because so many people are not familiar with the ballot and I have the sample ballot here and so basically under sheriff right now we have Antoinette Irvin, Nicole Jackson and Emmett Jafari and then we have this line yes. and so basically for those of you that are in support of um, Carol Adams and want to vote you would check the box down here and write her yes. name in down on this this line that's what that line is for that she is a write in so you won't look and find her name on the ballot you have to physically write her name in and i wanted to mention that because a lot of people that are not ballot savvy they'll go and they go she won't even on the right. ballot you have to add her name onto mm -hmm. the ballot so i want to switch gears because this the this for me is the easy part tell us about the carol adams foundation so the Carol Adams Foundation was created, of course, from the, my, my family history. My father murdered my mother when I was 17 years old. And like I said, I didn't like the police because I called with them over and over again, and my mom lost her life. And even when it came to sentencing, my father was sentenced seven years with five years suspended. So he only served 24 months for murdering my mom. And so I really didn't have an affinity towards law enforcement or the criminal justice system. And then. God played this trick on me. He made me become, become one. But you know, it was the most. It 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 is what pushed me again into where I was supposed to be, and that meant in the street and interacting with moms just like my mom, with families just like mine. And so after being there with them, I had to share my story. You know, I'm responding to a call of a domestic, and the lady's beat, and the man is over there. You know. And I'm standing there to take a report, but then 
everything in me makes me, I'm trying to suppress and be the professional, be the officer, but everything in me is like, listen, listen, you have to understand that I'm, I'm not telling you what you should do because of what I've been taught. I am telling you because my father murdered my mother when I was a teenager, you know, and the moms, the women are looking at me like, you know, and even when I'm talking to the dad, listen, my father murdered my mother. This is not good for your babies. And so it, it just, I just could not suppress it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I and, and, and it took 17 years for me to get it up and get it out. So from when the date that it happened until 1997, from December the 30th, 1980 to um, 1997, I, we, I never really talked about it. Never shared the story. Never, you know, people knew, but you talk, me talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so here I am in this new job as a police officer, and, and it's just coming out. I, I got to tell when I'm going on these calls. And so as I would talk to the, them, the, the families, you know, trying to get them resources. And so, you know, I had a whole bunch of cute little pamphlets. Mm -hmm. But when we would get to the service providers, they didn't have some of the things they had listed on the pamphlet. Mm -hmm. And so that was frustrating because here I am, I've convinced them to make some make steps, steps. And then we get, we get to a dead mm -hmm. end. And so once we got to the dead ends, I refused to leave them stranded. I started to spend my own money for whatever it was they, would, they needed. I would just come, come out my own pocket with it. And so after doing that for quite a few years and trying to get my friends to say, you know, hey, can you give me some money for to do this? Can you pay for somebody to go take a bus trip? You know, can you help me buy bus tickets, that kind of thing? So um, December, 14, December 2014, we created the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And so that way, so that they could get some benefits from donating to, so, <laughs> to right. the Carol Adams Foundation. Okay, okay. And so, um, and that's, that's it, in, in, in every day, you know, at work, um, I started a walk, and our walk is coming up on October 28th, mm -hmm. and this is our 10th anniversary. So the walk came, proceeded the foundation mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. established, and so in this with the foundation, my goal is to provide gap services. I don't want to duplicate what the Y does, um, Safe Harbor, those other entities, but I wanted to be that extension of them. So when their policy and guidelines said they had to stop, they can call me, and that's what they do. They call me and say, listen. We got a lady, she's here, and she's trying to get back to um, California. Um, can you help us out? Mm -hmm. You know, and then that's when I get the ball to rolling. Okay, we're going to get some transportation for her. When is she ready to go? And to get her on out here. Or if they can't stay in a hotel, you know, they're funding. They, they've been in a hotel for four or five days, and that company's funding has gone out for this mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Then I'll pick it up, and I'll um, pay for that stay in a hotel. And then also we have three transitional homes where we have moms living with their children while they're transitioning. And one mom, we've had her in, in a house for three years coming up. And so this mom, she was shot in the head by her husband and she had three babies. And her oldest baby is the one that called the police and saved her life. And she graduated last June and she's at ODU University. But putting them in that house and decorating it and putting them in a safe space. And I wouldn't let them bring any furniture because I wanted them to start off fresh. fresh. And this is their space, backyard, everything, so they don't have to worry about anything. And mom can have time to work on her plan, and, and the plan is that she get connected with Habitat for Humanity. So when they move, they're moving into mom's house, their house, and they don't ever have to move again. Because stability, you know, safety and security comes with stability. And if you don't have a, a roof over your head, or you don't know where you're going to sleep the next night, that is just so much to try to deal with. Mm -hmm. And you're dealing with being in a domestic relationship, first of all, and you have your children. You know, and when I'm talking to people, I ask them, I said, just think about where you are right now. And if you couldn't return home, you couldn't go back home for nothing. You know, and we don't think about that. That is difficult. Unimaginable, really. Mm -hmm. And you got three little kids. Mm -hmm. They want to go home. They want to play in their room. They want to play in their toys. They want to watch their own and TV. You just gotta, yeah, and you and you and right. then so you gotta, you know, and your psyche is going. You know, um, the kids gonna play on you, play on you because you was like, well, I can take them back home, and then mm -hmm. I can just manage, manage this crazy, crazy craziness, right. right? You know, so um, we do after school programs. We do summer programs. Um, and with this new resource center that we're going to open up, we're going to have the opportunity to do training programs there. Um, I have a food cart that I haven't even put on the road yet because people need to understand that we need the holistic approach. It, it's or a list of places to go 
to find things is cute. But we need sure things. This is like going to the racetrack and knowing which horse is going to win exactly. the race. Absolutely. We that's what that's what's needed. When I send somebody to you, I know you're going to take care of them, mm -hmm. and I know you're going to give them everything mm -hmm. that that me and you have mm -hmm. talked about. Mm -hmm. Not just a cold shot, not not just a show up, you know. And then I'm sending them somewhere where they don't, you know, where we just ran out last week, right. you know. And so that's back or, to and then they get the, that, that defeated yeah, that, attitude, yes, yes, right, yes. right, right. And so and so and that's what the organization is all about. And so. At the resource center, we're gonna have a computer lab. We're gonna have a kitchen where we can do some cooking. Um, we got space where we can do training, girl talk, boy talk, every kind of talk. You know, just empowering pieces. Um, in the computer lab, the kids can come up, the adults can come up, apply for jobs. I'm gonna um, a, a partner with Goodwill, so Goodwill can be there on site. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have a calendar of ongoing activities, mm -hmm. so people can come in there and, and, and even with, um, even though we're gonna have all of that going on, we have area where we can set aside someone who's experienced in domestic violence, mm -hmm. we can do an assessment, you know, they can be in a safe space, and we can come up with a plan as to what are going to be the next steps, you know. Okay. And um, and then I have some people who have volunteered their services, like some, some counselors, you know, licensed counselors, mm -hmm. so some days they'll be there, you know, and we'll have a calendar that says they'll be there donating their time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and even attorneys donating their time because they want to help support the cause. So, you know, and, I, and I'm so, so excited about it and can't wait to we open the doors, you know, and just all the good and great that we're going to do mm -hmm. and, 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 and reinstilling hope into people. Absolutely. So with all of this that you got going <laughs> on, right, yeah, with all of this, got, what does Carol do for fun? Oh, look, I love to read. I love to play tennis. Um, and I love driving. I love driving, and and I love driving on rainy days. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. In I Richmond? Love, um, yeah, I like to okay. get on the highway and drive. But I see, I got a six-speed car. Okay. So you know, I love to drive. I love music. Um, I love the movies. I love walking. And and like I said, I'm an introvert, so I love my quiet time with my family. And then you know, I love to travel. So I might tell my family, hey. Um, I remember one year I took a seven day vacation in Mexico by myself. They were like freaking out. What? What? <laughs> I was like, and, and I missed, I, I took a flight out of Richmond and I got to New York and I missed the connecting flight in New York. So, you know, I was like, you know what? This is cool because I don't have to rush mm -hmm. and I'm going on vacation. So I told the guy at the camera, I said, just tell me when the next flight is going to go. I'm going to be over here curled up on the chair mm -hmm. with my blanket. And I I'm like Linus. I take a blanket or a sweater with me everywhere I go. And I said, so you just let me know when the next flight is going to go. And, you know, I had the best time. I went to Mexico once. I met some beautiful people that I'm still connected to. But just to be able to walk around, travel, go on little tours, and just and, I, and I'm a photographer. I have I, and I have a photography business. Most people don't know, but mm -hmm. that's that's my passion, and I take pictures all the time, and so and that's where my heart is. I, I, I and I love to draw. I'm really creative, and I attribute that to growing up in a household of domestic mm -hmm. violence. So I had to create my own, own safe, space, safe space. Safe space. Yeah. Okay. And so and um, and I love reading to kids. I love kids activities and um, programs with kids because you know I when I was a kid the. I always had to worry about what was going on at home. And so I really haven't had the opportunity to be a kid, mm -hmm. you know, because it's always mm -hmm. been this thing, this this monster at home. home. And mm -hmm. so, and I believe that, you know, I'm, I'm a, we all be kids mm -hmm. and sometimes we suppress being a kid, mm -hmm. but I, I, I refuse to suppress that. I've suppressed some other things, mm -hmm. but being a kid, you know, and, and my passion to do things, that's that is that's it. Um, this summer I did a camp. We do a summer camp in partnership with Virginia, with the Attorney General's office, it's called Virginia Rules. And every year I try to create activities, different activities for my kids to do. This year I took 63 inner city Richmond kids flying at the Chesterfield Airport. Okay. Absolutely free. Absolutely free. I met some pilots with a piloting program. And then the kids get to become, get to be a part of a program so that they're interested in becoming a oh, pilot. Wow. Because that's what I wanted to be when mm -hmm. I joined the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a pilot. And so I love to fly. But to see those babies... You know, and they were like fearful, you know, because it was so unknown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and some of their family probably still don't believe they went mm -hmm. flying. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they had to fill out the form. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they say, so, sometimes have you been flying before? I was like, yes, yeah. but I'm scared. I said, it's okay to be scared. I said, but what's it like? I said, it's just like riding in the car, baby. So when you get out there, just, just enjoy, enjoy yourself. Enjoy the ride. And, and whoever sat up front got to drive. So, which was really, which was really, really cool for the kids. You know, and working with the kids in, 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 for the last, 
six years at the police department, I created my own internship summer program. So if you had a baby that was at least eight, between eight and 16, they could come to work with me every day. Right, I remember in the academy just, when yeah, they talked yeah, about that. Yeah, just come out and hang out with me. And wherever I go, you go. You, go. you know, and one year the chief asked me, well, Carol, who are all these children? I said, they're mine. I said, no <laughs> questions. I tell you no lies. They undocumented, but they interns, okay? But okay. and teaching them and give, you know, exposure is the key. And that's, and, and again, that's what this is about. Follow your dreams. And if you don't ask and you don't know. And if you don't do, you don't okay. get. And that's the thing. And so, and, and, and that's how, that's what I teach my babies. And somebody, um, I called a girlfriend of mine. She worked with me at the police department. And she changed. She she left the police department as, like, our photographer. And she went to work in the Division of Forensic Science as a scientist, right? Wow. As a fingerprint scientist. And so she's looking. And she said, Carol, what should I do? I said, it's a no-brainer. Go for the job. You know, and I called her. I said, what did I tell you when you decided? And she had been there for like 10 years. And she said, you told me to go for it, Carol Adams, and that's what you're supposed to be doing because that's what you would be telling, telling me. me. And so, and that's what life is all about. Right, because you can't tell mentor people and tell them right. one thing, but then right. and, and contradict and do, yeah. and do and be the other. Person. And even though they didn't know, some of them didn't know that that was my desire. But, you know, we all have dreams, and so many women have called me and said, you go. I was like, you know, because being women, we always put ourselves second. Second. Because, you know, we're daddy's little girl, then we get married, mm -hmm. become mama, and come grandma, mm -hmm. and we put all of our dreams and desires, we've set them aside right. because right. we're trying to be the best parent that we right. can be. But God didn't mean, he said equally yoked. So you should be doing, living your life in parallel to whoever you're in a relationship with. Right. And you shouldn't be putting things on the side. He didn't say that, he said equally yoked. And the only way to be equally yoked is to get up and get out there and to do. What will you miss most about RPD? What will I miss most about RPD? I will miss my, my, my family that's there. But no, I'm not going to miss them because I'm not going right, anywhere. I'm not going family. anywhere. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I just won't be there inside the building. Mm -hmm. But the, my everybody's there is like my, the chief has said, you are the mama of the police department. And, and I love everybody. And I treat everybody just like they are my immediate mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. and my family. And so and that's what's really, really important, that I have a family. It wasn't my job. You know, my job, I... I I did it the way that I wanted to do it. It was my position, but my job was to go there. And first of all, I don't talk about this a lot, but that night when the police responded to my home, I remember them being in my home when my mother was murdered. I remember them, you know, not laughing at the situation, but laughing and joking while they were there on scene. And I never, ever, never, never, ever said it out loud. But I went to work with those same police officers, and they don't remember me, but I remember them. So being a professional on scene has been the number one priority for me, and teaching them to treat people on the other side of the table like they're your own family, because I've been on the other, other side, side of, the, of table. the table. And nothing separates you from that tape except for God hasn't allowed it to happen to you yet, because no life is exempt without some type of horrible experience. Either you get it early in life or you get it later in life. And I just happened to have gotten mine early in life. So I know that there's no separation between me and the people, me and any human being. God made us all equal. And we just have different roles with different things going on. And so, and that's been a priority. And, and, and as a citizen of Richmond, anybody that knows me, wherever you see me, in uniform or without uniform, I'm going to hug you and I'm going to love up on you. And I, and I, I remember when, when I used to do crime scene work. I was out at a crime scene and this gentleman, this girl came up to me and she was sawed, really, really sawed in her clothes and all that. And you could really smell her before she got to us. And she came up to me and she hugged me. And all the officers was looking at me like, what is wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? It's not your business. Not your business. I treat everybody like I want to be treated and I don't know care when I see you, I'm always, and, and I travel alone because my friends say, you can't make it anywhere because you talk to everybody. It's like, but <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed every time I see you, I'm supposed to say, "How you doing? How your family doing?" That's that's what God why God made us for that relationship. Makes a difference yes, in a lot yes, of people's lives. Yes, and to hug them, mm -hmm. you know, because some people don't get hugged. And to say that you know somebody care about you, and that's really really important. 
And that's 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 what we're missing. We're missing this community closeness. We've gone to these silos where mm -hmm. if it's not happening to me, it's not, not my busy. baby, not my that's problem. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But you know what? Sooner or later it is it's gonna going happen to happen to you. Oh, somebody that you know. Absolutely. And so and that that's why you can't turn a blind eye and, and even with the families that I work with in the community, you know, people sometimes call me before they call nine one one and I say, Okay, and I'll call nine one one but because they trust me and they know that I'm not gonna betray them, but they know that they can call me and I'm gonna help make it right. And it doesn't have to be anything bad, but you know, pertaining to their own family. What do I do? Helping people navigate through and that the helping the citizens navigate and helping the officers navigate. And like I told you when I got that text, that's what that was all about. But hey, what what explain this to me, you know? Or if they write a letter or get ready to conduct the interviews, you know, because and, and I try to help train others is that, you know, you, you have to, con education is important. Mm -hmm. You never stop learning. Every day you learn something. And every day you're supposed to be about learning something. Absolutely. Because knowledge is power. power. And everywhere I've worked, I've tried to learn the organization from the top to the bottom. Because if you call and you have a question, you don't really want me to tell you, um, ma'am, um, you need to call this number. That's not my area. Or call this number. You, you know, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to have some background and to be able to help guide you. And I may not be the expert, but at least I'm supposed to be able to give you some knowledge and the foundation as to the question that you answer you, that you're asking, and then be able to connect you to the person that you that can really solve your problem mm -hmm. instead of you having to go through a whole list of people. And I'm just going to tell you to call him, and then you're going to call he's going to tell you to call somebody, call somebody else. else so customer so service. That's a priority for me. Absolutely. You know, we and and everybody should know who's doing what so that we can correctly direct people to where it is they need to be. So how do people get in contact with Carol Adams? This is all like um, different um, as far as campaign. Are you um, in a position or in the need of taking donations for campaign sponsorship? The Carol Adams Foundation. Just tell us how they get in contact with you to follow you. If they have any questions, um, if they if they are more inquisitive about your run for sheriff, how do they reach you? Okay. So the Carol Adams Foundation has its own website. It's Carol Adams Foundation and caroladamsfoundation.org for the website and Carol Adams Foundation Facebook, okay? And so on there you can see um, the things that we're in need of. Mm -hmm. And so, and as far as the campaign goes, there's a Facebook page also, you like Carol Adams for sure, and a website should be up this afternoon. And so what I've asked people to do is, is that if you want to support or help me, um, that's really, really great. Prints and posters, some flyers, you can see the logo, and it says, and, and, and the thing is, is that I'm not saying elect Carol Adams, I'm saying write in Carol Adams. Mm -hmm. That's that's our tag, write in Carol Adams, because like you said, my name is not on it, right. on there, so write in Carol Adams for sheriff. And so, um, printing posters, the flyers, and make your own sign. If you want to, if you want to support me, just go to the store and get a twelve dollar sign me, and you're supporting me. Because right now, I don't have funding to make signs. Um, I make um, different people are making flyers and posters to put out there. Some people are making their own T-shirts. So if you go to the Facebook page, you can see, see what's out people. there, and you can make your own. And mm -hmm. that way, you're contributing to the to the um, to the campaign. And then on campaign day. You know, I need some people to be out and to help share the spirits and literature for me. But just um, go to the Facebook page and you can inbox me if you have something specific that you want to ask. And the team will get back to you. And we also have a volunteer um, link out there where you can just go in and you can say what your strengths and your weaknesses are mm -hmm. and how you would like to contribute. Okay. And so this has been your girl, Raw Silk. You've sat in with us and we appreciate it on this special edition of Sister to Sister Can We Talk with Queen Carol Adams. <laughs> candidate for um, Richmond City Sheriff. I want to mention that the elections is on November 7th. Please pay attention um, to the ballots. There's a referendum that's on there that um, needs to be paid attention to that you would check all of your candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, house of delegates, commonwealth attorney, sheriff, and treasurer is on there. So we like to thank the Crossley Coleman Group for our sponsorship and Live and Global Media, Ron G Cartoons. We also want to say that we are having next Friday, we are sitting down one on one with Richmond Treasurer Hopeful, okay. Michelle Mosby. And so she'll be here sitting with us and telling us about her run and why she um, chose to go from sheriff after 
running um, for mayor in the city of Richmond. And Carol, we thank you so much for joining us on a Saturday morning mm -hmm. and um, sitting with us. And we'll see you next time. Have a good afternoon.